If you'd like to support this channel, we invite you to check us out on Patreon. Thank you so much. Hey, what's up guys? So if you've been following the channel for any amount of time, you may have noticed last year that there just hasn't been a whole lot of videos from Real Turf over the last summer. And the reason for that is if you haven't noticed already by looking at the scenery behind me, we actually sold our house in Midland and moved last year to San Antonio. And it was a long process to get here and a lot longer than we ever ex expected or even planned on. And so what I thought I'd do today is walk you guys through what all has happened in our life and what has been, you know, going on with the channel. And then later I'll show you guys the new property and show you guys what all is hopefully to come this year for content and what you can look forward to because I'm really excited about it. And so if we walk back last year to about May time frame is about when all this started. Um, the door started to open our way up for us to move to San Antonio and it's somewhere we've always wanted to be. We've always enjoyed visiting here and we've been trying to move here for years. But the doors were always closed, you know, it's just jobs that wouldn't work out or whatever the case may be. And so I was very fortunate to hire on with Aviat Networks here in San Antonio doing microwave radio communications and that's what allowed this journey to begin is uh, I got hired on in May and my wife is a school teacher and so naturally um, you know coming into May and school's wrapping up the school year's wrapping up and so it wasn't until later in the year that she could start looking for and applying for new positions because teaching positions usually don't post until summer time frame you know so about the May time frame we put our house up for sale and for, if you were at all you know paying attention to the housing market you know that it was just way hot way high houses were selling like crazy and so we expected the same thing to happen for ours you know we put ours up for sale in May and you know, Realtor was confident, oh, within two weeks it'll be gone. And so we listed the house. We were all excited, ready to go. And of course, looking for homes here in San Antonio, trying to find, you know, one that we wanted to come check out. And uh, something about Midland, San Antonio is that's about a five and a half hour drive. It's 300, about 300 miles away. So it's not like you can just, you know, hop in the car and come check out your new location and find your new home you know any time of the week so it had its challenges and so like I mentioned house supposed to sell really quick and uh, to give you guys a little bit of background about our home is we were living in a golf course neighborhood um, there in Midland and our house was one of many that were for sale in that neighborhood and it was one of the most renovated uh, completely renovated and of course you guys have seen the lawn so you knew you can imagine the curb appeal right you know it's a good looking house and and so uh, when we listed that house you know a couple weeks went by we didn't have hardly any views nobody was interested in it but yet all the houses around us that were for sale were just still going just as quick as can be and um, so during all this time frames you know, this is May, June, July. Um, wife still hasn't gotten a job yet. We're still looking. And, you know, things are starting to get a little uneasy. Just, you know, wanting to know why your house isn't selling. You know, you get anxious. And so the realtor started doing, um, you know, some open houses. Did some realtor open houses, trying to get some interest in the home. And, you know, the feedback was always absolutely loved it. It was never a complaint about the price, never about a complaint at all actually i mean everything was always immaculate was the response we got but yet no one was coming to look at it no one's putting in any offers and so we we drove into about the august time frame and you know by this time i've got the house half packed up because you know at any given moment <laughs> it's like as hot as the market is you've got your house for sale if it sells you've got to be ready to move into the next next one and um, so my wife, like I said, school teacher, still looking for jobs. And if you know anything about teachers, so when they get hired on 
then when the school season starts, um, there's a week or two of what they call professional development right before school starts. And my wife literally got hired at the very last second at one of the best schools she could ever be at on a Friday. And keep in mind, we're still in Midland. She got hired on a Friday, professional development started on Monday. And so what that meant was dad, me, with two little boys that are one and four, um, you know, working from home for this new company, online through Microsoft meetings and all the things. And so now that meant that dad is keeping the two boys at home while mom has to go to San Antonio and start, you know, getting her job going and getting her classroom ready and getting prepared for her school year. And so we're like, we can handle this, you know, um, the house will sell, things will move and everything will be fine. And this went on uh, September, October, <laughs> uh, midway through November of back and forth. My wife driving back and forth on the weekends. I had the boys during the week. And during the week while I'm working, I'm also having to clean up the house to have showings of the house. And you know, when you have a showing, you've got to leave the house for an hour, hour and a half at a time. And you can imagine how that disrupts little boys naps and snacks and and even my work schedule right i mean it was complicated and so it was quite a challenge and so you know during all this time um our house was listed high like i mentioned just like everybody else and naturally we dropped the price uh, a couple of times you know trying to sell it and again, the feedback was still immaculate. It's never a negative response about the price. And so fast forward a little bit to about maybe the end of October, school's going and there's this guy from California. And if you're from Texas, you know what I'm thinking, <laughs> right? I'm not being judgmental. I'm really not, but you know what's running through your mind, okay? You got this guy from California coming to buy your house in Texas. And, you know, naturally you think he's making 800000 to a million dollars off of that house, and he could just pay cash for mine here in Texas, and off we go. So, in, in one, one hand, it was like, this could work out really good, and then on the other hand, it was a little bit of fear, right? And, um... So fast forward some more through that, you know, the guy, he loved the house. He flew in on a weekend and I'm pretty sure that our house was the only one he looked at because within about an hour we had an offer and that was at, like I said, a reduced price. And, you know, so we started moving forward with paperwork, right? And when you start doing all that, you've got to get your house appraised and so we got the house appraised and you know i assume since he used an online mortgage finder company like rocket mortgage you know they use an out-of-town appraiser and by out of town i mean three hours down the road <laughs> not familiar with our market at all appraiser and so what that naturally did is it 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 brought the price of our home significantly down because it didn't, the, where that guy's from, compared to where we were, the markets are two different places. And so we went through kind of a time of contesting the appraisal and it took a while for that to happen. And there were just things in the appraisals that just didn't make sense. I mean, if you've sold a home, you know, um, like I said, we were on a golf course in a golf course neighborhood. So things like that that apply toward the appraisal of your home were not considered in ours. So that's why we contested it. There were things that should have been in it but just were missed. You know, it wasn't it wasn't to be greedy with the price or anything like that. It was just, you know, let's get a fair price, right? That's all we were after. And in the end of all that, um, you know, we ended up selling that house for about $60,000 less than what it listed for. And, 
that was a big deal. But there's more to that story. And so during all this time, you know, the Lord's working in our lives, right? And, you know, you're, you're stressed out, you're praying, you know, you're praying for your family, you're praying for the sale of the house, you're praying somebody comes, you're praying for a smooth transition, you know, with all the stresses and worries that come with all that. And I'm, and I'm praying for my boys, you know, that they're going to be okay transitioning and moving and selling and mom's away for weeks at a week at a time, you know, and uh, just with dad. And so, you know, when you got a little baby at home that missing out on that time with her mom, it gets, it starts to get worrisome, you know, and stressful. And so, you know, as we're walking through that journey, God's obviously working through that, you know, and there was uh, something that I was working through, and that was, you know, kind of the story of Moses, you know, led the Israelites out of Egypt. Uh, and if you fast forward through it a little bit, you know, they end up at this Jordan River, and they're faced with kind of a decision to make, you know, to cross through that river and end up in the promised land that God had set aside for them. That was going to be more than they ever hoped, dreamed, or imagined. And they weren't sure if they could trust crossing the river. They weren't sure about that land. They weren't sure about it. They had all the questions run through their mind, just like the things we're dealing with with selling this home. And so as I'm working through that, you know, what comes out of that is, you know, do you trust me enough? You've seen me do all these wonderful things in your life in the past years, you know, and I'm speaking to you guys too, right? Think back to all the wonderful things that have happened in your life. We all have challenges, right? But there are so many things where you can look back in your life and be like, God delivered us through that, you know, and we can trust Him. And so here we were standing at this Jordan River, basically, of, you know, God saying, do you still trust me? Because we were getting down to the stress to the max you know my wife was ready to quit her job that she just started and we were about ready to just give up and think this wasn't going to happen you know and and we were to that stressed out point and you know you start wondering you know why i got this why i got that you know all the natural things so you know you find yourself there do you trust me enough to get in and cross this river to the promised land the things that i prepared for you that are more than you've ever hope, dream, or imagine. And, you know, I kept pushing through saying, yeah, we, we trust you with this, you know. And I'll tell you what's real special is, you know, at night with the boys saying our prayers for bedtime and praying for mama and all the things, right? And, and we we're praying for a house and my oldest, that's four that you see running around with me in these videos, you know, he asked, I asked him, you know, what, what kind of house do you want? And he says, he says, I want a red house. Because our home in Midland, it was red. So naturally he wants a red house. I said, okay. Didn't think much about that, you know. We kept praying for a red house, you know. And um, during all this time of us looking for a new home, they're not red houses here in <laughs> San Antonio. It's not like West Texas, it's just different. You know, a lot of them are stucco or siding or something different out here. And so the homes in San Antonio, they were, you know, extremely hot. And, you know, you would see something get listed during the week and they would say best, best offer taken by Sunday at such and such time. And so we happened to find this home that had been sitting here for a while and had no idea why. And we came to check it out, and of course, it was perfect. You know, it was a perfect location to school, perfect location to everywhere we needed to be. And we looked at, you know, three homes, because it's all the time we had. You know, we drove over here, and it was three homes, is all we had time to check out late one night. And uh, there was this house. And What's really special to me about this house is of all the houses we looked at, you know, we'd been watching them online. We had many that we liked and then they were sold just one right after the other. 
But what was so special to me about this house is it's a red brick house. <laughs> and, and, and it gets me every time because, you know, during all that chaos and walking through the Jordan, trusting God through that, he listened to my little boy's prayers for Red House. So if you continue through the story of the crossing of the Jordan River, God instructs them to get 12 stones out of the riverbed and stack them up there at the edge of the river as a memory of what all God had done to get them, you know, get them through all the things, all the struggles they'd been through and get through that river and into the promised land. And so whenever we pulled up at this house, and I'll show you later, there are stones everywhere. I mean, we're on limestone here. And it's just yet again, you know, another symbol of God taking care of us through that whole thing. And I gotta tell you, this house, this location, being here in San Antonio, it's more than we ever hoped, dreamed, or imagined. This house is, you know, a lot larger than we ever looked for. Had no intention of buying a large home. And I'm confident there's a reason for that, and we don't know what it is yet, but you know, I'm, I'm, I just, you know, just trusting God that, you know, the story's not over. You know, what he's done so far is amazing, but I believe too that there can still be more to it than what you ever dream, hope, or imagine if you just trust him. And so, you know, there's, there's a lot to be done here at this property, but it's gonna, it's gonna be a lot of fun. It's gonna be. A lot of sweet memories with the boys here to raise our boys. It's gonna be um, just a lot of special moments and a lot of special moments I could share with you guys as well. And so I, um, I'm really excited to be here, you know, and I've just, I'm still a little bit, you know, in shock a little bit, still trying to figure everything out and adjust to being here. But, you know, it's gonna be special. And uh, I'm, I'm excited to bring you guys along. I'm excited to show you what all we're going to do on this yard and what all we're going to do here um, over the next couple of seasons. I think it's going to be a really great, great time and a lot of good content for you guys as well. And uh, so, you know, I told you all this story and my point about it is, is if you pay attention to our community, on this lawn care community that we have. If you watch The Lawn Tools and you've listened to Jordan and what all God's doing in his life with, you know, mentoring these young students and the possibility of buying the Bannon Golf Course to serve and, and help families. And if you listen to Pete with GCI Turf and, you know, him talk about you know his beliefs and things he's been through in his life and you listen to him about his brother and the twins and the, the babies and all the things they just went through and how god delivered them through all that i'm telling you that to tell you god work is working in our community and there's something so special about it and it's all just from mowing grass guys it's something so simple but you know all of all of us on YouTube, we're just faces on YouTube. We we have real lives just like you do. We've got families, we've got struggles, we've got the day-to-day -day grind. I mean, we do, we experience the same stuff you guys do too, but I'm confident that, you know, you can look back in your life and you can see where God's been faithful. And, and it's just so neat to me to see all the different areas that God's using our community to do things in and so that's why you guys are so special to me and and there's just so much more to come I mean there's just gonna be so much more 
uh, I think our YouTube community is just, just getting started and I just think it's so great. And so as far as the channel's been over the last year, despite us moving, uh, you know, we rolled over a thousand subscribers this year. And, you know, thank you to you guys for watching and enjoying the content. And what that has done is it started to open opportunity for some lawn care opportunities that I never dreamed, hoped, or imagined. And um, I'm really excited to see where all this will go. You know, uh, where where all this will lead. On, on YouTube and I'm excited to share it with all you guys and so anyways guys I hope um, I really hope that story blesses you and uh, you know I, I just want you guys to know you, you guys all mean so much to me I can't tell you how much I enjoy talking to you all you know answering your questions helping you out with the you know your mowers or seating or whatever the case may be that you guys hit me up with and I love talking with you all and that's what this is all for it's just just to serve you guys and that's that's the primary focus of this channel is to just be a resource and serve you guys and give you guys resources and information that you just can't find out there and uh, so I really hope this channel continues to bless you all and I really hope that you guys continue to enjoy it and so with that, guys, let me take you around. Let me show you a little bit of the property and what all's coming up for the channel this year. We've gone from a golf course lawn to quite possibly the worst lawn on the block. It doesn't have a functioning irrigation system and it's mostly weeds and field grass. Most of the flower beds have been eaten by the deer. Just like the front yard, the backyard needs a lot of work as well. It doesn't have an irrigation system at all and a complete renovation will be underway. There's a lot of potential with this property. We sit on just over a half acre and there's plenty of room for a golf course quality turf and the new putting green one day. So guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Be on the lookout this spring for a new series called The Worst Lawn on the Block, where I'm gonna take this yard from the state it's in now to golf course quality again. There's lots of renovation work to be done, and we've got to rework the sprinkler system, trench in a new one in the backyard, spray off the existing grass and weeds, and till it all up, level it all, so that we can get back to real mowing. And I'm gonna put out some golf course quality turf again, so there's just lots to be done. It's probably gonna be a couple of seasons worth before I get to where I want it to all be. And of course, someday we need to tackle a new putting green. But there's lots to come, guys. If you haven't already, like and subscribe to our channel. I appreciate you guys very much. And that's gonna do it for this one. We'll see you in the next one.